Number one says that we have a pattern of dots that grows exponentially. The table shows the number of dots and the step of the pattern. So write an equation to represent the relationship between the step number n and the number of dots y. So y is going to equal, and then we want our, it's growing exponentially. So we want our initial value, okay, which is 1 at step 0. Then we want to times that by our growth factor to the n power. So if we look here, these are growing by a factor of 5. So if we multiply by 5, we keep getting the next number of dots. So y would equal 1 times 5 to the n. And really, since the initial value is 1, you don't really need that. So you could just have it like this. Um, at one step, there are 9,765,625 dots in the pattern. What step number will this happen at? And explain how you know. So we can just continue multiplying. There's a couple ways you could do this. Just continue multiplying by 5 until you get it. You could graph this in your graphing calculator and look at the table. So you can see when the output equals this much or the y value. So I just um, multiplied, I just continued multiplying by 5. So I just tried a few different values. So 9 to the third we know in the table was 125. So then I tried 9, or sorry, 5 to the third. So I tried 5 to the sixth and got um, 15,625. So I went up to 5 to the ninth and got 1 million... 953,125, which was getting closer. So then I tried 5 to the 10th and got 9,765,625. So I found it. And so that means that at step 10 is when that number happens. Number two, a bacteria population is modeled by this equation where H is the number of hours since the population was measured. How long will it take the population to get to 100,000? And explain your reasoning. So we see that this population is starting at 10,000, right? So the initial value is 10,000. And then we also see that it is doubling every hour because we see the growth factor there is 2. So we could just keep doubling these. So after one hour, okay, so after one hour, this doubles to 20,000. After two hours, this doubles again to 40,000. After three hours, it goes to 80,000. And then after four hours, it goes to 160,000. So that means somewhere between here, it hits 100,000. So somewhere um, between three and four. So that number of hours is going to be between three and four hours. Number three, complete this table. So you want to come up with, um, we see that both of these are filled in, the x value and the, and the denominator. So it's 10 to the x down here. So this one is 10 to the negative 2. And you see how there's two zeros here? So there's three zeros here. So this one is 10 to the negative 3, meaning this will be negative 3. Then we have four zeros here. So that's 10 to the negative 4 when we have 1 over that. 10 to the 0 power is 1. 10 to the 1 third. So you could just write it like that, 10 to the 1 third. You also maybe would write it as a cube root of 10. 10 to the first is just 10. Here we have three zeros and it's just 1,000. So this, whoops, is going to be positive 3. And then here we have three, six, nine zeros. So this is 10 to the ninth, meaning that our x would be 9. Number 4, here's the graph of y equals 3 to the x power. What is the approximate value of x that satisfies this equation? So we're going to want to look for the output to be 10,000. So let's find 10,000 on our y, and then we'll follow our graph across at the 10,000 mark to then see where this hits at the x. So here's where 
10,000 hits the graph. So then we'll just follow this down to the X axis and we see that it's just before 8.5. So maybe you said approximately 8.4. Number five, one account doubles every two years. A second account triples every three years. Assuming they start with the same amount of money, which account is growing more rapidly? So we have to figure out how much they're growing each year so that we can compare them instead of just looking at two years and three years. So this one has a growth factor of two, and then we want to do one half of its doubling period since this is two years. So we'll split it down to one half. And so then if you do that in your calculator, you get that this one is at like 1.14. So growing at a factor of 1.41. Then this one triples. So the growth factor is three every three years. So we want it in one third of its tripling rate. And if you type this into your calculator, you get a decimal of 1.442. So this one is growing by 1.442 times each year versus 1.41. Um, so this second account is growing faster. Number six, how would you describe the output for the um, inputs between zero and one? So these outputs are here, okay, between this number and this number. So it looks like maybe between like 25 and 50, but I don't know this one exactly. So I'm just going to say um, that the Y values are going to be between zero and 100. Then the inputs um, from three to four. So here's the inputs of three where they start. Here's the inputs of four where they are. And so if we follow this over, we see that the outputs are going to be between 400 and 800. So 400 is going to be less than or equal to Y is going to be less than or equal to 800 um, for those outputs. Number seven, the half-life. So half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. Complete the table that shows the amount of carbon-14 remaining. So um, after 5,730 years, the picograms is half of the original amount. So we'll just take three divided by two and we get 1.5. Now we've done two half-lives. So we're going to go another halfway. So divide 1.5 by 2. Now we have three half-lives. So divide by 2 again. And we get 0 0.375, a fourth one. So we'll divide again and get 0 0.1875. So part B says, after how many years will there, will there be 0 0.1 picogram of carbon-14 remaining? So we see in this fourth um, half-life that we're at 0.18. So we need to go again. So now we're going to do a fifth half-life. So divide by two again, and we'll get 0 0.09375. So this is when it hits about 0.1 after five half-lifes. So five times 5,730 would be the number of years. So this is 28,650 years until it gets to um, 0.1 picograms.